Cohen is from Mississippi. Hey, hey, Blake. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my question is, I'm, I'm uh, uh, 60 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, a year ago, or a little over a year ago, when I uh, I took all my money out of the stock market, uh, I'm self-employed. Uh-huh. Um, it just didn't look like, I mean, it wasn't the investments I had. The guy who was handling my money was making more money than I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my investments, and I was just concerned that at that time our business was, you know, was not very good. We weren't making a lot of money. I I took it out with the thoughts that I might have to uh, start taking money out of my retirement fund, a fund to supplement my income. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, since that time, uh, my business has turned around. I'm doing better, making money, but I, I have this money in a bank uh, that. Uh, I'm drawing, you know, drawing, uh, I don't know, uh, 0.75 or 2% interest on, mm-hmm. uh, which is, from my understanding, not bad, but of course that's not good at all. Right. Uh, but in comparison to other banks. But what I'm trying to do is to try to figure out what I need to do with the money that I have mm. uh, in this bank. I mean, I don't intend to retire because I love what I do and I'm in good health. And, you know, as, as long as I can work, I intend to work. So, I mean, it, as, I mean, the, the money that I would <clears throat> use would be just in a, you know, case of emergency or something like that. But at, at the same time, I don't, my opinion is I don't want to put it into somewhere where I have a good chance of losing it because I don't right. want to do that. Right. Well, let me ask you this, Blake, is, um, is this money, you, you mentioned that you, you, you took it out of the market, you put it in the bank. Was it an IRA money or qua- is it, is it, it's, it's, a, it's SEP. a SEP. Okay. Gotcha. So, um, that uh, there's a couple things you can do. I mean, certainly one of the things you can do, uh, if, if you, I, here's why I'm concerned. I hesitate a little bit because, um, I worry about your, you know, uh, tolerance, you know, to be able to deal with, you know, the volatility in the market. But, you know, one of the things you could do is you could take some of it out, about 40% of it. You could, you could do a couple things. You could open an IRA account now. So wherever you move it, you got to move it within another IRA account, you, you know, or a SEP account. You can't, you can't just, uh, you know, take it out. And I'm sure you know that, or you, you can, but you don't want to do that because you'd have to pay tax and penalty. But you could open up another account either at a brokerage uh, account or at a Timothy plan or mutual fund company, and you could put some of that money in something relatively conservative. And I think that would probably be a good idea. If you're going to use a a Timothy plan, they have a conservative growth fund. It's not going to set the world on fire. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to be up, you know, it's not going to get you 20%. Uh, but it's conservative. Conservative, in other words, it's not going to be taking a lot of risk. So therefore, there's not going to be a huge return, but it's going to likely over the long run, not any given year. But when you average it out after, you know, eight, 10 years, it's it's going to do a lot better than it's likely to do in a money market account right now. So that would be one option. And I would only want to see you do that with maybe 50 percent tops of the tops of your money the other thing you could do is try to put it into a brokerage account that you do yourself and you put it in to some utility stocks uh, or some uh, energy companies that are giving you a pretty decent dividend that are going to be a little bit more stable than some other stocks out there, big company stocks. And uh, maybe when the bond market settles down a couple years, you can get a couple bonds. And, you know, I'm happy to help you with that and give you some, some more detail on it if that's something you wanted to do. But in any event, don't do it with more than 50%. Because even though you're in good health right now, Blake, uh, you love what you're doing and you're, you're planning on working, which I think is great. You know, you, you know, things change. Things could change. And I, I wouldn't want something to change where you're going to have a need for this money 
and have all of it tied up into a market because the day you need it may be the day the market is down and you're going to be forced to withdraw it. So you got to maintain some cash. Uh, and I would like to see at least 50% of it staying right where it is. Well, as we, as it stands now, uh, what I'm trying to do is, is primarily not for me. It's for my wife. Okay. Uh, as long as I'm able to work, we'll have an income. She's a, she's a housewife. Uh, our home is paid for. We uh, we have no debt. We have no credit cards. Uh, you know, we don't buy it if we don't need it. And if we can't pay for it, we generally don't buy what we're trying to, you know, we just figure we don't need it. Right. So, uh, so I mean, we, we uh, that's the situation that I'm in right now. And I, what I, I mean, I know that uh, I don't want to miss the boat on, uh, on, uh, putting the money somewhere, you know, where I can draw a better interest rate. But I've been through both downturns and lost a good bit of money in those downturns. And then, uh, you know, and actually had to build it back myself with me putting money in there. Yeah. Because the market really didn't build it back. Right. Well, here's what I want you to. put my money in there. Yeah. Here's, uh, Here's what I want you to think about, Blake. I want you to think about not missing the boat if the market goes up. I want you to think about. If the market goes down, which it's just as likely to come down, if not more so, than it is to go up over the next three years, I want you to think about um, protecting what I have on the downside. Because every time, and I don't have to tell you this, you know it, every time it comes down, it could take you three years, four years for you to get it back to where it was. Then you got to wait and hope for another three years to start getting some gain. In the meantime, you've lost six years. You'd have done better just leaving it in the money market account at the bank. So I want you to think about preservation. I want you to think that, yeah, I may miss the upturn. I may miss that uptick. That's okay, though, because my goal is to preserve uh, the majority of what I have, or at least half of what I have. So um, I, I, I say that's fine if you've got an eight eight-year to 10-year window to take 50% of it and do something that has a little bit more risk to it so that you can take advantage of the up, uptick, but I still want you to protect uh, a great deal, 50% or so, of what you have just in case that comes down. So I want you to play both sides of it. So hopefully that gives you a little... Uh, let me ask you this. I mean, do you think if I do that and now's the time to do that with a market as high as it is or no i mean i de- yeah ideally blake uh the 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 uh ideal time would be that um you'd wait a little bit i mean i think we could see a pullback here by the end of the year but right now by all indications are that the fed is going to keep dumping keep printing money keep dumping cheap money into the markets as long as they do that uh if i look at the past 3 years uh, the market living off a drug that the Fed has been printing money and has been going up, uh, the, the real question is, is how much longer can it go? I don't think it can go much longer because I think we're nearing a place where stocks are getting too overvalued uh, for them to continue to go up to the, at the pace that they've been going up in the last year and a half. But uh, I would rather see you wait and see uh, if there's any dust that settles. But I, I hopefully that helps you a little bit. So I, I'd wait at least until, um, you know, the the uh, first part January February, and uh, see end of fir- end of January February and see what what's happening in the market. Thank you, Blake. I appreciate the call, buddy.